Hi all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to make a 3D player game object called Jump and Wall Slide by only using visual scripting and not writing a single line of code. With that being said, let's get started. So this is our scene view right now. Let me just explain you all the game objects that I have my scene view. So let's get started. So first one is a player game object itself. Inside player game object, we have our two more empty game objects. The first one is ground check. If I just zoom in, so it's below over here. Just below our player game object was collider. So this is the collider that we are using for ground check. This is used for checking whether the player is currently on ground or not. We have set the trigger as true. Because we do not want it to be you know to be restricting the player's movement that's why it only trigger the on collision events and that's what we want to use similarly for wall check what we have done we have created one sphere collider this is again an empty game object this is a sphere collider and again this is a trigger condition so what will happen once if a player moves in the left or right direction and if it collides or hits with a wall game object having a tag as game as wall then this will trigger the on trigger events that's why we we are using wall check and sound check with table now we have three walls or pillars them are having tag as wall we have one ground this is having a tag as ground and it's also having a box collider component again for pillars have a box collider component that's it for the variable game objects now let's go to our script graph this is the script graph that we have created okay let's start with the first one start with on start event node over here we are simply setting the look right and left variable okay over here we have our two variables of vector p i i would say the type is quaternion this will be used to rotate our player from left to right direction or right to left direction so you so i simply open this what we are doing we are simply getting the obviously setting the value of look right variable with the current player's rotation value whatever rotation parameters we are having for player we are simply setting it for the look right variable and for look left what we are doing we are simply multiplying the look right rotation values with these values that's it for this now on update what we are doing we are actually setting the rotation of the player game object based on the direction we are facing so let's say if we are moving towards right then the player should look towards the right direction if we are moving towards left then the player should look towards the left direction this is what we are doing over here the value from this node get axis row horizontal that means minus 1 0 or 1 if this is not equal to 0 that means we are moving either to left or right direction then we are simply setting the animator is running as true okay this is just used for animation if this is false we are then simply we are setting the is running variable as false over here we are again checking if our value from get axis row node is less than zero that means we are moving in the left direction if that is true we are simply setting the current rotation with the value of look left variable if this is not true that means the player is moving in the right direction then we are simply setting the current player's rotation as that of the look right variable value now if i will run this see if i'm pressing d e, it's going to the right direction if i'm pressing a it's moving or looking at to the left direction now we are using on fixed update method to Simply check all the digit body functions or nodes. 
I'll open this one over here. We're simply setting the current player's movement. If if we are pressing A, then it should move the negative x direction. If we are pressing C, then it should move the positive x direction. That's why we are simply setting it seven variable speed. So speed with multiplying it with whatever value we are getting from this node. From this, we'll get either minus one, zero, or one. For y, we are simply getting the velocity, the y element from the current phase object velocity. After this, okay, before I call sliding and other, let's just talk about collider thing. Over here, we are simply checking if our player game object or the ground check variable that we have over here stores the game object that we created for checking the ground whether the player is on the ground or not if it has collided with ground if this is true then we are simply setting is grounded variable as true if once our player game object jumps then it leaves or exits the collision right so at that point of time this event will be called and again we are checking if the last game object that was collided with our ground check variable or object was ground if this is true then we are simply setting the is grounded variables value as false similarly what we have done we are also checking whether our play game, game object touched a wall or not this is the variable or the game object if this collided with the game object which is having the tag as wall then we are simply setting wall touch variable as true again the same thing if on exiting the collision the last game object that it collided with was wall if this is true then we are simply setting the wall touch variable values as wall now if i go up let's take this particular note it's pretty simple nothing complex what we are doing is for oh, again okay, again so if you guys do not understand so i have created these subgraphs and in these subgraphs i have all the the nodes as well this is really useful for tidying up your main graph so that it looks i would say more readable and not that complex so yeah so let's get back subgraph that is falling sliding is false sliding now over here i'm simply checking if our player game object touched the wall that's why wall touch is true if this is true and our player is currently is in the air so that's why is grounded is false and we are constantly pressing either the a key or we are constantly moving in the negative x direction or the positive x direction it should not be standing still if these three conditions are true then we are simply setting our variable is wall sliding to true after this what we are doing we have another variable for jump time this is being used for the quite a time what it does is so let's say as soon as i leave my wall game object through this logic our player game object will have a split second of time to perform the wall sliding or the jump so that's why we have used it over here for this variable we are simply setting the value of jump time with wall jump time again this is the variable that we have created over here storing the value of 0.1 plus time dot get time so this stores number of seconds from when the game started so as soon as we play start this stores all the seconds from that point of time and now we are simply you know adding these values and setting in the jump time if this is not true then what we are checking we are checking if a jump time is less than get dot time dot get time if this is true then we are setting is was sliding back to false back now after this what we are doing we are setting the wall slide velocity over here we are doing nothing but just checking if our is false sliding variable is true if it is true we are simply setting the current player game objects velocity in this way where for the x direction we are simply getting the x value of the current velocity 
for the y what we are doing we are clamping the y velocity or the y element of current place game object's velocity because we want it to slide and not fall so that's why we have used this function mathf.clamp it takes three values the first one is the value that we want to clamp over here we want to clamp the y element of our current game player's velocity the second value is the minimum velocity the minimum value that should be there we are simply setting it with the wall sliding speed you see over here we are setting it as minus 1 because if we fall down the velocity you know goes to the negative direction or negative value and then for the max again this could be anything but we have simply used load that dot dot get max value node because it stores the maximum value a float variable can store so that's it again these are for animations only so we about that's it so this is for our ball slide velocity now for jumping what we are doing we are simply checking if our space key was pressed down if this was pressed down what we are doing we are checking if our is grounded variable was true or not because we want it to only jump when the player is on the ground not in the air so that's why this is being used if this is true then we are simply setting the current player object's value of velocity like this where we are simply getting the x element of current velocity and for y we are simply setting it with the jump force variable that we have set over here that's it if this is not true if our player is not on the ground then we are again checking one thing if our wall sliding is true let's say if our player game object is not on the ground but it is actually sliding on the wall at that point of time as well we want to make a player jump but that jump value would be different so if this is true then what we are doing we are simply setting again the velocity of a player game object where we are simply getting the x element of the current velocity so y we are setting it with ball jump force so again this is one more variable that i have set up over here like that if this is false again this these are only for animation don't need to worry about that's it i go back and by run this this is a player getting rotated based on the direction that we are moving in moving towards this is the jump and if i'll jump and simply contact collide with the balls the player is sliding Let's do one thing. If I'll jump and if I simply leave my direction key, the player will fall down. It will no longer slide. One more thing to be aware about is that for our player game object and for our walls, we need to create a new physics material. After creating it, we need to set our dynamic friction, static friction, and bounce to zero, so that it doesn't get you know stuck. on the wall you are constantly you know pressing the direct this is really important so make sure that you create a physics material and set these parameters as zero so after creating the new physics material with these values what you need to do is go to a player game object and inside the capsule collider just select that material that you just created similarly for the pillars as well go to the boss collider like the material as the new material that you create if you guys learn something new then i request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel so that i can create more videos related to unity's visual scripting in the future thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video